Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sorry for the short delay there. I'm pleased to rise in the House today to speak on Bill S-2, the Strengthening Motor Vehicle Safety for Canadian Act, which amends the Motor Vehicle Safety Act to give the Minister of Transport new vehicle recall powers, and I believe this is good for Canada. According to Department of Innovations, Science and Economic Development, there are five major auto manufacturers in Canada, Mr. Speaker, and they operate approximately 11 different manufacturing facilities across this country. In addition to that, there's approximately 3,200 car dealerships across Canada. And in my riding alone, Mr. Speaker, I've got 15 different car dealerships. And my point in saying this is that we're talking about a massive industry, an industry that employs hundreds of thousands of people and are a very strong contributor to Canadian economy. Now, I'd just like to go back 50 years or so. You know, back in 1965, there was a guy that not very well known at that time by the name of Ralph Nader. And he wrote a book called Unsafe at Any Speeds. You know, and if you look to a lot of journalists and stuff like that, that's one of the best written books or articles in the 20th century, Mr. Speaker. He took on GM. He challenged him for a vehicle that they were producing at the time, the Corvair. But he didn't only mention the Corvair, he went out of other cars, the Falcons, and a lot of new American-produced subcompacts, and it's being unsafe. Nader later went on to form the Nader Raiders, a group of young, brilliant lawyers from across the United States. And they challenged the U.S. government and industry to improve the standards of building new vehicles in the United States. They went after international manufacturers to improve the standards of building new vehicles in the United States. And of course, what they did spun off to help protect Canadians. You know, their work directly led to the development of the Centre for Auto Safety in the United States. Today, we're here talking about Bill C2. And, you know, this is because of what Ralph Nader and his group started. The proposed legislation includes amendments that would give the Minister of Transport the power to order companies to issue a recall notice and make manufacturers and importers repair recalled vehicles at no cost to the consumer. It will give the Minister of Transport the power to order manufacturers and importers to repair new vehicles before they are sold. And this is very important, and I will get back to it later, Mr. Speaker. It allows the Department to use monetary penalties or fines to increase the safety compliance and leverage the monetary penalties to require manufacturers to take additional safety actions. It will provide the Department with flexibility to address our ever increasing vehicle safety due to new technology. And it will require companies to provide additional safety data and conduct additional testing to address safety concerns and increase our vehicle inspection capabilities. This is good for Canada. It's good for the safety of Canadians. As you may have noticed, this bill is similar to Bill C-62, which was introduced by our previous Conservative government in 2015. This bill has provisions that did not appear in Bill C-62. It differs by adding consent agreements relating to safety improvements and non-compliance companies. It also enables the Minister to make the nature of any violations and other related details public. And why shouldn't they be public? Currently, under the Motor Vehicle Act, Safety Act, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, only manufacturers can order re vehicles recalled in Canada. Transport Canada does not presently have any authority to recall vehicles. This needs to change. This Act <coughs> will make that happen. The Department merely lists active recalls on its website and issues press releases if it believes that there's an issue with models of vehicle. As I said earlier, Mr. Speaker, 
the Nader Raiders led us to where we are today. You know, if we look right back to the turn of the century, Henry Ford had no rules. He built cars as he saw fit. He designed them, and you took what he made, and if you didn't like it, too bad. But automobile industry had a pretty good run at manufacturing cars for the fifth, first 50 years of the 20th century, without a lot of rules. Thank God today we have strict global automobile manufacturing rules and laws. This new bill is part of that strategy. Mr. Speaker, the current Act does not allow Transport Canada to issue monetary penalties to manufacturers. The only way to ensure compliance with the Act is through a time-consuming and costly criminal prosecution, a change that will come about because of this bill. I'm sure many members of this House, and maybe a few of us, might own 2015 Volkswagens or 2014 Volkswagens. There was an issue. I don't want to dwell into it because I think most people here in this room know what those issues were. This had far-reaching effects on hundreds and thousands of Canadians who purchased these German-made vehicles. You know, and it took from the time this all started to only this spring when the claims were finally being resolved and there was a standard in which they were going to uh, justify the things and there were still some claims outstanding out there. It shows even today, Mr. Speaker. Major world-class manufacturers can make mistakes. And I'm going to leave it at that with a few question marks at the end of it. Government must be a watchdog. It's our duty. It's our duty to keep Canadians safe. You know, Mr. Speaker, in Canada, over a five-year period from 2010 to 2015, the number of safety-related recalls increased by 74 percent. 74 percent. That's a large number. Rising from 133 recalls in 2010 to 232 recalls in 2015. While this is a large jump, Mr. Speaker, I do want to note that between 2010 and 2016, manufacturers our automobile manufacturers in Canada issued at least 318 recalls for which Transport Canada had not received any complaints. They did this on a voluntary basis. And I think I have to say thank you to the automobile industry because that's a big cost to them without any force by government. But we know, we know from what I just spoke a few minutes ago, that we need to still be watchdogs. Transport Canada, Mr. Speaker, only influenced about 9% of the recalls during this time. Clearly, Canadian manufacturers are looking out for the safety of our consumers, which is increasing challenges as the vehicles become more and more complex, Mr. Speaker. In 2015, 5 million passenger vehicles were recalled in Canada. In 2015, 5 million passenger vehicles were recalled this was a consequence of increased caution by automakers and increasing vehicle complexity. Now, <coughs> I said earlier, they, they did this on a volunteer basis, and I, I, I think we have to say thank you. But I think they also realized that internationally, whether it's the United States, Canada, Europe, France, we have regulations in place, and we are the watchdogs. <coughs> so most of this is probably because there are watchdogs out there, and we need to be there. This act is needed, Mr. Speaker. I look back quite a few years ago, 1958. Some of you guys, and ladies and guys, may not have been here. I think you were here, Mr. Speaker. You might have been a young whippersnapper then, but 
I was here. You know, when I look back, I, I, I've been a car bus since about the time I could read. I grew up with Tom McCall in Mechanics Illustrated. And I loved every article he read, and I think I read it for as many years as he wrote articles. But, you know, I, I think back 1958, Ford Motor Company, one of the largest manufacturers in the world, developed a beautiful car called an Edsel. What a flop. You know, it was ahead of its time. They come up with this bright idea to make a push-button automatic transmission in the steering column and only about 50% of them worked for about 50% of the time. And Ford, in the wisdom, pulled that car after a two-year run. Actually, they, they did slide it into 1960 by customizing a Ford car to look like an Edsel, but they got rid of the vehicle. Probably very wise. You know, and we look back over the years, GM trucks from 1974 to the mid-'86 were plagued by exploding fuel tanks. GM, in its wisdom, designed probably one of the, I think personally, one of the greatest trucks out there, the C10 and C15 GM and Chevy truck, but they put the fuel tanks on the outside of the frame rails because customers wanted 40 gallons and you couldn't get it on one side, so you put 20 gallons on each side of the frame rail. But guess what happened when you got hit? They exploded. I believe there's some, something like 600 Americans killed by explosions. Ongoing launch lawsuits today. The Corvair. Was it a bad car? Yeah. Some people say it was. Others loved them. Built from 1960 to 1959. Yeah, I'll, I'll guarantee you. The first three years, they handled terribly. The back wheels tucked under on a hard quarter, and you could roll it. The Pinto. Fuel tanks exploding. A lot of these vehicles today, including the GM truck, are still in the road today, they've never been corrected. This is why we need a strong act, like we are dealing with today, to protect us and Canadians. As I said earlier, more than 600 people have been killed because of inadequacies by manufacturers to follow through on defects on their vehicles. And there are still lawsuits going from vehicles manufactured in the 70s. Today, vehicles are complex, and they need to be identified. They need to have their defects identified as quickly as possible and be corrected as quickly as possible. I'm sure everyone is aware of those self-driving cars that are just beginning to hit the road. Some members here might also have one of those cars that parallel park itself. When the rise of smart technology, vehicles are quickly evolving and becoming much more highly integrated. In order to facilitate industry comp competitiveness, Mr. Speaker, Canada's regulatory regime needs to be more responsive to new emerging technologies, fuels and safety advances. And I don't even want to dwell into uh, self-driving cars. I don't want to go there right now. This bill will allow the department to require manufacturers to provide more safety information and do testing when needed as well as increase their flexibility to address ever-changing safety technologies. You know, last fall, Mr. Speaker, I bought a new Buick Enclave SUV. I drive about 40,000 kilometers a year in my riding. And it has all the bells and whistles. even has this backup alert. Nice big camera on the dash. Tells you when you're backing up to see things. Second day I owned the car. I backed into my house. Thousand dollars damaged. It was a big hit, Mr. Speaker. I couldn't even claim it. But my wife was mad. I felt stupid. Should have hit and run. Yeah. Thought of that. I admit, I was inadequate and not inclined to understand the technology of the new vehicles, Mr. Speaker. Now I know how it works. Well, it is important that Bill S2 protect the safety of consumers. It is also important to understand the implications of this bill on small businesses and local dealerships, dealerships ensuring that they are not negatively impacted by these changes. But what I'm saying here, Mr. Speaker, and I want you all to listen here, because I have to thank the Senate for changing this bill 
to protect dealerships across Canada, small business dealers, medium-sized business dealers, that were being stuck with cars that had recalls on them and they could not sell them. I had dealers in my riding that were stuck with vehicles for over two years waiting for repair parts so that they could put that vehicle back on the lot and sell it. They were paying the interest on those loans. That is unfair. That is wrong. This bill protects those dealers and puts that authority back on the manufacturer and importer of that vehicle to take care of that and to compensate dealers throughout Canada from coast to coast to coast. That is a big factor and I thank the Senate for bringing that amendment in. This amendment makes the manufacturer entirely responsible for the cost of recalling of all repair vehicles. It will be a counterbalance to ensure the auto dealers are treated fairly as small business consumers of the manufacturers. How much time have we got, Mr. Speaker? Two minutes? Good. As usual, there are more improvements that can be made. For example, manufacturers are concerned with some powers which can be seen as being too sweeping such as ministers' ability to order tests. Now, therefore, I make one recommendation, is that we add the word reasonable in the Act so that the minister can ask that a test be done if there's reasonable grounds for that. And that is only fair. I, I want to stress, I've got a couple minutes left, Mr. Speaker, and I just want to stress on one point that I have had a number of calls in my riding, I imagine a lot of other people. I'm a motorcycle fan and I have a motorcycle, and I ride every day <laughs> when I get the opportunity. This summer was not very good. But anyways, motorcycles, like automobiles, are manufactured Canadian Motor Vehicle Safety Standards, United States Motor Vehicle Safety Standards, European Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. Yet, constantly, in this country and in the United States, dealers will take those bikes before they leave their showroom, modify them with loud exhaust and stuff like that, and then sell them to the unsuspecting public. And who suffers? The people living in residential areas, recreation areas, when guys go by with extremely loud exhaust. That's one area that I think that we can address. And I see one of my fellow riders has loud exhaust. <laughs> Anyways, in closing, Mr. Speaker, uh, I believe that this proposed legislation will strengthen the oversight on the recall process. It will be a big win for consumers and overall safety of Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.